Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be getting an RTX PSU and turning it into a benchtop power supply. This is the power supply, and I picked it up a few years back on curbside cleanup. Here's the data sheet of all the cable colors if you're following along at home. I'm going to stop talking and just let you watch the video for a bit. The wires I'm soldering here are for the two lights. One of them tells you whether or not it's got wall power, and one of them tells you whether or not the power supply is running normally or not. Now this is the start of where things started going wrong. I chopped off a lot of the wires here and left only one for each of them, which meant each of those wires has to be under a lot of load. It's a 450 watt power supply, which equals quite a lot of amps when you do the maths. I had absolutely no idea until just before testing when I figured that out, because I'm not used to working with really high wattage stuff. So here I'm connecting all the individual wires, which I actually have to go and fix later, which you'll see later on in this video. The power switch stuck out a little bit more than all the other stuff, so what I had to do is I had to cut out a little groove in the fan so it would fit properly. So I was just about to start testing it when I had the thought of the wire thickness. This is when I worked out the wire problem. I'm getting quite bored even watching myself have to take it apart over and over and over again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a bunch of wires, I'm going to put them all like together and wind the ends together, and then I'm going to sold them onto the contacts. Um, but there's a whole heap of little bits of just the very like last few millimeters of the wires, and including little plastic coating on there. So I have to pull all of them out, and it's quite tedious. Here I am soldering on the first set of wires, and it got very boring, very quickly. Here comes the second set. Lucky for you, my phone decided to stop recording, so you don't get to see me solder on the third and fourth set of wires. 
Alright, so here I am starting to solder on all the wires onto the contact points, and I don't know why, but for some reason the best view was right in front of the camera, so you get to see my head a lot. At least I got a nice new haircut. Just going to put a quick content warning on this because I absolutely slaughtered the soldering. Definitely not my best soldering. In fact, I think it might actually be my worst. But it works. It's just so pretty. And it's time to put it back together for, I think, the fourth or fifth time. As per usual, we're gonna use this, I think it's like a test device, um, and it is so I can turn it off and on quickly. I'm gonna turn it on, see what happens. So no, there's no power to it just yet, we're turning the device on. And just this red light should turn on. Yep. This is where it got really weird. So I've been testing for about, I think it was about five minutes, and the only voltage I was getting out was a five volt from where the 3.3 .3 volt was supposed to be coming out. And for some reason, the switch didn't work either. So I give this thing a little nudge and eventually it starts working. Oh. It's spun up to life. I have genuinely no clue why this is working. One of the theories I've got is that it's actually the US gives a USB output so you can charge your USB even while the power supply is off. But that wouldn't explain why the switch doesn't work. And that would not explain why turning the yellow contact would make it start working again. I'm really not sure. I thought it was a loose connection at first, but I'm starting to doubt that as well. After that, it was working fine. I've used it for like a good three hours to test stuff and there's been no other problems with it. Can someone please in the comments tell me why that happened? I sat there watching it for a few minutes and it seems to be working, so I'm gonna go plug in that 12 volt motor. So I'm gonna turn you on. Turn you on. And it's working. Great thing about making this is I've got a whole heap of wires left over that I can use for other projects now. After leaving it for a bit, I'm just gonna see what it'll do if I put a 12 volt LED into it. Now I'm sure some of you are probably wondering why I'm wearing gloves, and it's so I don't get electrocuted. I know probably only going to be electrocuted by 12 volts or lower, but it's still got a 240 volt input, and then since I've opened it, I've kind of compromised its safety. So we turn it on and see what happens. Yeah, LED's not working because we've... I'll just test it downstairs. It's getting 12 volts out. There we go. Alright, it is just a broken light. Anyway, that works. It's 12 volt. I'm really happy with how it turned out, and it's been a lot of fun over the past few days. But this is the end of the video, so, you know, do all those youtube -y things, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye. And if you're wondering, I did make the music.